Before this video gets started, I have to give a quick shout out to some awesome event coming up tomorrow, the 15th of May at 12 p.m. UTC. I'm super excited. This is going to be one awesome show. Hack the Box is streaming a live tournament on Twitch. You can check it out at twitch.tv slash hack the box, and it'll be a live competition, a live hacking battlegrounds attempt with some incredible players hosted by myself and Ipsec. So this should be one hell of a show. Please, please, please get excited. Check it out. Clear some time on your calendar for tomorrow, the 15th of May at 12 p.m. You can find it online on Hack the Box's Twitter if you want to read a little bit more about it. They do have a link to their blog post where you can see all of the fantastic players up in the lineup here, and it's going to be a great time. Please come out. I hope to see you tomorrow. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another YouTube video. We're still taking a look at the Hack the Box Cyber Apocalypse Capture the Flag. Uh, let's get started. I'll hop over to my computer screen here where all the good stuff's going on. And we're moving down. I'm going to go take a look at this Wild Goose Hunt Challenge. Uh, looks like I have the challenge info here. Outdated alien technology has been found by the human resistance. The system might contain sensitive information that could be of use to us. Uh, can you help? All right. So it looks like we can go ahead and start this with a little Docker container. I'll go ahead and turn that on. It will generate an IP address and port for me to look at. I will open that up in a new tab here. All right, cool. <laughs> what is this? Heroes, heuristically encrypted real-time operating system. Uh, this is kind of crazy to look at. What am I doing here? Need a username and password. See if that does anything? No? Okay. Are there are these links? Is this a website? <laughs> like am I am I on the internet right now? Uh how about admin? Admin admin? Submit. Still gonna give me a login failed. Is there like a guest account? Guest guest? No. Whatever. Uh let's go ahead and download these files here that are supposedly present. So I'll go ahead and download that. I'll make a directory for wild goose hunt, I think. I'll move in the downloads folder that web wild goose hunt, bring it into this directory and unzip it. Okay, now we have the source code for all this. Another white box challenge here. Let's take a look at the Docker file. Let's see what this is using to build it in case it happens to put the flag in any specific location. Looks like we are gonna end up running node again. So another kind of JavaScript application that will run server side. Configuration files, entry point, all good stuff. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at that entry point in case it does anything interesting. Oh, yeah, okay. This actually starts up MongoDB, so no SQL or MongoDB. And that sort of database that isn't a kind of static structured query language, but is a little bit more flexible in how it can hold objects. And it looks like the admin username is something that exists in the user's database. And it will have a password here. Okay. That password is going to end up being the flag. And that looks like that's what we need to determine. Is there going to be some NoSQL injection or something that we're going to end up taking advantage of? Let's take a look at this index.js file. Okay. Loading up with Express. Mongoose as a library to go ahead and interact with Mongo. The local database, good enough. Using pug to view pages and engines here. Using body parser to read in data that's probably going to be JSON. JavaScript object notation. Um, is there stuff in these models? Yeah, there's a user kind of data type or the object for how the user is represented. Just takes the username and password. That's not all that interesting. What is the logic that kind of works with this? Let's check out views maybe. Is there functionality for what's going on here? Oh, geez. This is pug. So a templating engine sort of thing in, in kind of JavaScript node express land. What do I do? Oh, is this the main.js that handles it? It's kind of the HTML that loads it all up. So 
how about static JS for that JavaScript? Let's check out that main function. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So this is logic for how we log in. And we post to an API login with body being what we supply. And we get the response from that and the data. The data that's returned, whether or not we log in or not. Oh, this, this body though is just passed along from our target on its own, like from our submitted data. It's not sanitized or anything. It's not going to be validated for other stuff. So that makes me wonder if there is a vulnerability in that, just using blatantly the target. Can I do weird stuff with it? Um, I'll open up my developer tools here. I'm hit F12 on my keyboard. So I'll set a username, I guess again to be admin. If I hit enter, the login sends a post request, sending in the username and password. The response is JSON with an invalid username or password. So that fails. Can I send like the single quote? I know I'm in NoSQL, so this is going to be kind of different. It's not going to end up actually being like the data in the query that does it. It, it has to use some like node specific or MongoDB, NoSQL specific syntax. Uh, that is a thing though. Let's go to payloads, all the things one more time. And let's see if they have something for like NoSQL injection, which they do. Perfect. So what are we looking at here? NoSQL databases provide looser consistency restrictions than traditional SQL databases by requiring fewer relational constraints and consistency checks. I can't read. NoSQL databases often offer performance and scaling benefits, yet these databases are still potentially vulnerable to injection attacks, even if they aren't using traditional SQL syntax. So we aren't, we aren't, we, we aren't ever going to log in with this, are we? I mean, the only user that exists is the admin. And we're not going to be able to get an explicit result back. So once again, I think we're going to be looking at another blind injection technique, except this time with no sequel. <laughs> so we've done a, I, I've been recording a lot of these and so far it's been like an XPath injection for blind. Uh, it's been doing a sequel injection with blind. So they have an entry for this in payloads, all the things where we import a, all the libraries and stuff necessary to be able to do kind of the same structure as I've been doing previously with a blind injection technique. But you can see the payload here, the specifying a specific object. They're formatting it with the username and adding in passwords. And they use regular expressions to test if the password starts with some found character. So honestly, we could we could take this and work with it, I think. Let's go back a couple directories. Let's get back to our original and let's start up another script. Uh, we'll use, actually just paste this all in and add in our user bin environment Python 3. We don't need URL lib or URL lib because that's annoying. Uh, the username we know is admin, so we can just actually specify that, and it doesn't need to be supplied as a parameter thing there. Uh, we'll use an F string in our case. So, oh God, what have I done? I murdered something. Did I? F string? Oh, the F strings are kind of going to be annoying because of the curly braces that we use here. You know what? Let's let's use the format. Let's use the format string rather than the F string, like the percent representation of something. Uh, we don't need that though. We don't need the username because we're adding that in as admin. 
Uh, we don't actually want to bother with those bad characters. I think we, we, we can leave them removed because those might be considered to be specific things pulled in from like no sequel. It's, it's going to use the, that syntax kind of like it would and regular expressions might be getting in the way. So we can leave the headers. Uh, let's switch up this U variable to be the URL. The URL will be kind of as we've seen in our requests, it posts to the API location. Yeah, yeah, API login. So I will actually just grab the root here for that URL and then we'll do URL plus the API login. Now the data that we're gonna send should realistically be JSON, but it's gonna end up kind of interpreting that because we're supplying that header. Uh, verify equals false, that would be used for SSL stuff. Allow redirects equals false. Uh, we're not actually gonna end up logging in. I do want to see the response from this. So we send this and let's display it out. It's not a function call with dot text. And let's actually exit this. So we only send this once and see how it looks. Um, let's try it, I guess. Python 3 attempt, login failed. Um, oh, password is empty and C is going to be kind of an A to start with. Let's actually set this up kind of as we have previously. Let's do a leaked data. We'll set that to be an empty list with the emptiness there. So let's do for character and string.printable so it's a little bit easier to read. And let's do our character added on to the list of our joined leaked data all put together there. So when we do this, we can go ahead and display with an F string, print trying that syntax. Um, and I'll need to make that single quotes so we're not getting messed up in quotes here. Okay, how about now? Now something has failed. My spaces and tabs are getting in the way, so I'll use sublime text to convert all that. Trying zero, login failed. And let's let this keep going, actually. So we can see if we get to C when we determine whether we successfully logged in. That should be a capital C for the flag format. Yeah, login successful, welcome back admin. We see that flying by. So we can check if the response is equal to this. And we'll do that with a JSON again. We can check if that response JSON is equal to this string, in which case if it is, we'll do a leak data dot append character and break the current character loop. Perfect. So I think we're okay now. I'm pretty sure that's all we need. We don't need to uh, display out the JSON response anymore, which we are no longer doing anyway. So Let's see, after we get the capital C character, will we add it into our known list of characters? Looks like we're good. And will it find HTB or a capital H? Uh, if it does, we know our proof of concept is okay. And then, perfect. Now we can just go ahead and add that starting string into our flag format, HTB, and get the ball rolling again, I guess. Now we found a one, found a one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I started to say that again. It look, didn't look like we had something else. What will follow that, though? Oh, gosh. That didn't seem to behave. How did we get a one there? Is that wrong? Or did I run into a bad character? I must have. Oh, the quote must be getting in the way. So let's remove the uh, double quote as well as a character that we want to ignore. Are we going to end up with an underscore eventually? This is just, again, the, the classic kind of troubleshooting of bad characters that we might have used in our payload. There might be a few others, but 
Let's see. Underscore maybe? No. Backslash is going to die as well. Let's try that. I used two backslashes there, so it's an escaped sequence um, because backslash is the escape character in Python. I do want that to be interpreted as a literal backslash, so I'm going to escape that. And let's see if that works a little bit better. Underscore, please. Yes, we did it. Now it goes through a full iteration, and we see the underscore does hit successfully, and we're cruising through to the next character. I, I'm assuming that one is an I, so I, T-H-I, I thin, I think, I think? Yeah, I think. All right, we're cruising. I will pause the recording and let this go. I'll, I'll tune back in once hopefully we have a flag pulled out. We're still going, but uh, this is a long flag. <laughs> this is longer than the than what we've seen before. <laughs> right, I think we're reaching the end here. I see the flag spill out in lead speak. I think the aliens have not used Mongo before. And uh, there we go. Now we have a, a closing curly brace, and that should be the very end of our flag. Perfect. So that's it. We have used NoSQL, some MongoDB injection to leak out and do some blind injection to extract out that flag. So I'll go ahead and click that submit flag button here, paste this in, let's see how we do. And all right, <laughs> another one down, heck yeah. So that one, I think we, we got a little bit of a head start because we were able to totally steal some code from uh, payload all the things. And what they're doing here is just passing in the object sort of notation, like the curly braces notion to be able to determine, hey, if username is going to equal with this sort of operator in NoSQL, equal a string that we supply. And the password, we're gonna check some modifier, like how about regex? Does it match this pattern where that caret or the an up arrow is indicating the very start of the line or the start of the string? So we can check as we build out character by character that th what we're finding is the correct start of the password. That's how we can go about our blind Boolean test. So that is the sweet sauce for NoSQL injection in this case. And that's a, that's, I don't know, I feel like that's kind of a, a vanilla payload, but it works well in this case. And that's how we are pulling out that admin password or the flag in this case. So we're done. That's it. That was that challenge. Take a look at our script. Pretty good. And uh, I think that's all for this one. Thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you are enjoying these videos. Uh, I realize some of them might run a little bit long. I realize some of them might have me fumbling and failing, but hopefully that's all part of the fun. Hopefully that's part of the learning process. So thank you so, so much for watching. If you guys did like this video, could you please do those YouTube algorithm things? Press that like button, you know, maybe leave a comment, type something in that box there, hit that enter key or what? submit button. Click that submit, I don't know. Please subscribe, <laughs> click the bell, get notifications, get notified when I upload something, if you're into that sort of thing, you know? Little alarm clock in the morning. <laughs> All right, I'm running out, everybody. I think that's the very end of the video. Thanks so much for listening to me yap. I love you. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Oh, <laughs> oh,